I've made wooden clocks, mechanical toys, even power tools using parts and materials I got for free. And today I wanna to show you how I get even 3D printed parts like this completely free. Along the way, I'll show you some other projects I've done like this in hopes that it'll spark some creative ideas. Anyway, let's get started with step number one, recruiting your agents. This is a bandsaw that I built several years ago, almost entirely out of wood. Down here, there's a four horsepower electric motor, which I got from an agent. An agent is basically friends and family who know that you're interested in components that are being thrown away. In this particular case, I had a friend who basically said, hey, my gym is getting ready to throw away some commercial treadmills and some broken fitness equipment. Do you want any of it? I said, of course. When I arrived, I saw that the treadmills had already been put outside. Now, most of you, when you see an old broken treadmill on the side of the road, what you see is bulk trash. But what I see is a massive container, which contains structural members like square tubing. It's got an electric motor in it, bearings, belts, all types of electrical components that could be used in future projects. In fact, many of the components inside of this machine came from salvaged components. The two shafts that are supporting the wheels came from exercise equipment. This blade guard actually is cut from a piece of metal that I took out of an industrial printer. I bet most of you watching this have something in your house that has useful parts in it. It could be something as simple as a printer that no longer works or all types of small electronics, blenders. So if you share with your friends that you're interested in those things, your friends will begin to overwhelm you with components that they have right on hand inside of their house that they'd love to give you. When your friend has a broken washing machine, I guarantee you they'll call you first before they throw it away. If you really wanna expand your agent network, you might even tell your coworkers or put a sign on your desk that says, hey, bring me your old broken appliances or electronics. You'll be surprised how quickly your supplies will build up. Speaking of treadmill components, I've built so many projects using treadmills that I've made a whole video dedicated to things you can make with a treadmill, like my shop main lathe. So I'll put a link in the description so that you can watch that video as well. But to find all these free treadmills, you're gonna to need to look outside of your agent network and start looking at online resources. There are many places where you can get parts completely free without having to take something apart. Some of my favorite places to look are Craigslist online or Facebook Marketplace. Both of those websites have a free section where you can see things that are available in your local area. Not only will you find things that you might have to take apart to get the components that you want, such as a broken washing machine, you could also find complete components that people no longer need anymore. Even going as far as like old tools that have been upgraded and people are just getting rid of the one that they no longer need. Another option is local maker spaces. At my local library, there's a completely free maker space. All you have to do is take a class that shows you how to use the equipment and they'll let you 3D print or laser cut things for free, including the print material itself. Here's a wooden clock that I built. The motor that drives this clock back in here actually came out of a microwave, the motor that rotates the plate. Most of the bearings and all of the shafting inside of this clock came out of an old broken printer. So again, you can make some really cool stuff without having to spend a lot of money on parts. Now taking this apart, I broke these two gears in the front, so I 3D printed some replacement gears. It didn't cost me anything. And that option may be available to you. Now for many people, you might not wanna go as far as like designing a clock like this, but if you wanted to build the clock, there are lots of plans available online. In fact, I've made plans for this clock, which you could download from my website. If you have a local library like mine that lets you 3D print parts for free, you could 3D print 90% of the parts inside of this clock and then just build it with the plans available on my website. But of course, tinkering doesn't have to be limited to free stuff, right? If you're willing to spend a little bit of money, you can scale up your projects very rapidly. One of the things that I like to do is call around to my local job shops that do metal fabrication. They often buy 20 foot or 40 foot sticks of steel in order to build their structures, and then they're left with five and six foot pieces that they don't need, but will be perfect for my projects. They'd be happy to sell it to you for pennies on a dollar compared to what they spent because they've already sold the metal to their customer. What they have left is just scrap metal. One of my favorite places to look for heavy duty components would be industrial auctions. In fact, that's how I built this massive CNC machine. This is a hodgepodge of components I got from Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, and industrial auctions like govdeals.com. Looking at places like that, you're able to get all types of components, again, local to your area so you don't have to drive very far, necessarily. The further you're willing to drive, the better the deal is gonna be. Related to the online auction would be industrial surplus stores. 
Now there aren't as many of those, and usually you have to drive a little ways to find one. For me, the closest one is about two hours away, but it's well worth the drive. When I get over there, they've got a huge inventory of belts, motors, and all types of electrical components that I like to use in my home shop. In fact, many of these boxes that you see behind me came from an industrial surplus store. Yet another option for free materials is pallet wood. Now pallets come in a huge variety of shapes and sizes, and they can also be made of hardwoods like oak. There's some caveats though. You do have to disassemble the pallet, which can be a challenge for some people, and they can be pretty beat up sometimes, so you might have to pick through the options available. I used to live near a playground store where they made custom pallets for all of their playground equipment. After they delivered the playground equipment, they would bring out these single-use pallets and just stack them up and give them away for free. Once I found out about it, I would go by about once a month and pick up a couple pallets. There may be options like that available in your area. Okay, if you've never disassembled something like a printer or a washing machine before, it can be a little bit intimidating. Some people are worried about getting electrocuted and all kinds of things like that. So let me give you a couple tips real quick and tell you the essential tools that you need in order to get the job done. Number one, if you're gonna take something apart, I hope this seems obvious, but unplug it first. There are little capacitors inside of many electronics as well as appliances which can hold a charge, but there are plenty of videos that talk about how to discharge capacitors and even how to identify them. So I'll put some links in the description to help you with that part of it. But other than that, there's very little safety risk in taking it apart and appreciating these man-made inventions. In terms of tools, you only need a couple of things. Let me grab my electrical bag. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here that you don't need. I'm gonna pull out what I do think you should get. One, some type of uh, vice grips will be good. This is nice. I like the pointy ones so that I can reach down in the areas and pinch things and pull them out. Some type of screwdriver will be good. The ones with the interchangeable tip is what you're looking for. And I like this particular one because it's got the base with the extra bits in the bottom of it. The next thing you want is a security bit set, something like this. These little guys are important because sometimes when you're taking apart something like a microwave, it has a little protrusion in the screw which will fit inside of this hole. They're gonna have those various types of security bits to keep you from using a regular screwdriver. <laughs> like that will keep me out. Things like this will save you a lot of trouble. One of these little telescoping magnet deals that you can, again, use to reach down into tight spaces if you drop some screws or something else really small that you wanna pick up. The last two remaining items you might have already anyway, and that's a little flashlight, preferably a thin one that you can kinda of stick down into narrow dark spaces, and a decent pair of scissors for cutting wires and such. Now when you start taking apart larger appliances, it can feel like there are over 100 screws, but you're gonna definitely want a drill like this to speed up that process. Related to that, if you have something a little bit stubborn and it's hard to get open, having a good grinder and a hammer will resolve any other remaining issues. Those basic tools will get you through taking apart just about anything you will find in a normal household. This video was sponsored by KiwiCo. KiwiCo makes toys and hands-on projects based on Steam concepts. I need to make sure you understand how amazing this little box is. I've always had this not-so-secret mission of getting my kids excited about engineering and science. I've done all kinds of projects with my kids. We made air cannons. <laughs> we did science experiments in the kitchen. Three, two, one. <laughs> I'm always trying to come up with the next thing to get them excited about. So when I found out I could get a box like this delivered for each of my kids and even tailored to their interests, to me that's just astonishing. Let me just share with you how we do it at my house. For us, it's a family event. Either we'll set up at the kitchen table or we might also just lay on the carpet. One of the best things about it is everything is in the box. So there's no need to run out looking for screwdrivers or batteries. If you needed to finish your project, it's inside the box. Glowing pendulum. Why is the glowing pendulum your new favorite? Well, God, he's wearing Knowing how much my family enjoys it, I definitely intend to share this with some of my family and friends during the holidays. So here's the bottom line. If you wanna have these amazing boxes show up at your house or even share them with friends and family, you can go to kiwico.com slash fielding50 
That's KiwiCo.com slash Fielding50 and get 50% off of your first month subscription. Now that link I just shared is right down below in the description box. So if you scroll down and click on that link, not only will you get a discount on your first month subscription, you'll also be supporting this YouTube channel. My family truly enjoys having these boxes delivered to our house and I can promise you, you won't be disappointed. Now this list I just shared is by no means exhaustive. So if you've got ideas about how we can get parts and materials for free, I wanna know about it and so do your neighbors. So scroll down to the comment section and share your wisdom with us. We'd love to hear from you. I hope you found this video helpful. My expectation is that your projects will get a little cheaper and hopefully a lot less useful parts will end up in the landfill. Thanks for watching. Oh, how'd the neon sign come out? Turn off the light for me. Ooh. Ah. <laughs>